Hi friends, we are starting a face to face offline batch in Bangalore with SS Academy. That is for CA final financial reporting paper number one. I yeah, will be taking exactly two months from 1st November to 31st December. We will complete it. It is starting from 1st November 2022. Yes, and in Jayanagara branch of SS Academy, we have morning batch and evening batch will be at Seshadripuram SS Academy. Right. And if the student is missing because of any reasons, right, they are going to get a backup class. All right, we'll ensure that their things, I mean, they will study and complete. And from the face to face batch, you know the benefits out of it. We'll be completing the syllabus in time. You don't need to postpone and you don't need to compromise for your goals. See you in the class. Please share this information with your friends. That will help me and as well. Thank you. Next, for my books, that is an index made easy, our financial reporting made easy, and fast track summary book. Yes, you can uh, order in ravikanthmiriala.com or you can contact the given number for the books. Right. For your for your doubts, clarification, please join the Telegram group, Indias Discussion Group, RKM. These charts are from my book. Quick revision, fast track, um, charts book for financial reporting. Yeah, this book is available from my website that is ravikanthmiriala.com and it is available in the market. Yeah, let's look at India's 105. That is non current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. Yeah, see here the non current assets basically meant not for uses, not for, I mean, not for uses. We wanted to recover this, we wanted to get the recoverable amount from the sale of it, not by using it. Right, here there are two topics basically one is non current assets held for sale, the other one is discontinued operations. Let's look at the first topic. Yeah. See, uh, topic number one, non-current assets held for sale. From the name itself, non-current assets only. That is, that means current assets, current liabilities and non-current liabilities are not part and parcel of this standard. Those items will be dealt by uh, the respective standards. So, yes, and here there is one more word called disposal group. Disposal group means you are selling one factory, factory or one factory fully or one division you are selling. So when you are selling a division, that division may be having non-current assets, current assets, current liability, non-current liability. Even then, non-current assets held for sale only will be dealt by the standard. Other three things are going to be dealt by dealt by the respective standard. Okay, and this standard is not are not applicable for deferred taxation and the plan assets which are from India S 19 that is employee benefits and it is a financial assets which are held for sale obviously not applicable agriculture assets also not applicable insurance you I mean not part of syllabus. Yeah, if it is held for I mean even though it says held for sale if it is held for distribution also the standard is applicable. Yeah, if, if non-current assets held for sale, how do you measure it? It will be measured at fair market value minus selling cost and carrying amount whichever is lower. And if there is any loss, then it is automatically transferred to profit and loss. Only to profit and loss. Remember, it will never be debited to revaluation reserve even though there is a revaluation reserve with respect to that specific asset. I repeat once again, even though there is a revaluation reserve with respect to one asset, which is, I mean, where you must be following revaluation model and there is a revaluation reserve with respect to that asset, but we will not debit to revaluation reserve. It will be debited to, it will be debited to p and L always. If it is held for distribution, same sentence, fair market value minus distribution cost. Instead of selling cost, we should use the word distribution cost or carrying amount, whichever is lower. And here also, if there is any gain or loss, that will be transferred to PNL. Okay, when do you classify? There is some certain criteria, basically three conditions. And first condition has some sub, sub points, three more points are there. When you satisfy all the three conditions, then only we will be classifying a non-current asset or disposal group which is held for sale. Okay, what are the three conditions? One is available for immediate sale. Immediate sale means in the given, in the existing condition only you must be ready to sell and sale is highly probable. Highly, highly probable means management is committed that means they must have told the brokers and they must have advertised something whatever they are, they, are, they are trying to do it and 
the quoted price is the quoted price is reasonable and such kind of asset is actively getting traded in the market and uh, it is expected to be sold within one year from the date of classification and there is a uh, i mean uh, very less likely chances of going back stepping back and if you satisfy all these conditions then only we will say uh, we will classify the assets non current assets as held for sale yeah from the date you classify it it is for held for sale from that date onwards no depreciation at all okay if there is a subsidiary 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 you wanted to sell it off that is subsidiary is held for sale under that circumstance we do not do line by line consolidation we do not do any line by line consolidation entire assets of the subsidiary will be presented as one line item below the current assets all the liabilities of the subsidiary will be presented as one line item below the current liabilities and even non current i mean any reserves also related to reserves relate reserves related to the subsidiary also will be presented under the last line item of the equity it will be presented like that that if it is taking more than one year because of something due to something which is not be, uh, not in our control then that is okay it can be extended under that circumstance we have to apply if it is crossing more than 12 months we may, we may need to apply present valuation concept right and if you have if you have purchased any group of assets with an intention to sell it with an intention to sell it even though it does not satisfy the above conditions within first three months also still it can be classified as non-current assets held for sale because it is uh, it is intention you bought it immediately you bought it with an intention to sell it back okay right and right what are we supposed to do yeah what have you followed suppose if you had followed you must be following the ppe intangible asset or investment property you must be following cost model or revaluation model for intang for investment property obviously only cost model yeah if you had a first what are you supposed to do if whatever the asset first you have to depreciate till the date of classification as per the respective uh, standard whatever the life etc everything now as usual till the date of classification depreciate if you are following revaluation model revalue it correct revalue it but as you know as per in day 16 you should revalue it if the fair value and the book value is significantly different otherwise don't revalue it right then you check it now you should compare it after deducting the depreciation revaluation that number is now uh, revised carrying amount this carrying amount you compare it with fair market value minus selling cost now if there is any loss that loss is supposed to be transferred to profit and loss okay suppose if it is a group of assets that is disposal group if the disposal group as we discussed there will be non-current assets current assets current liability non-current liability yeah first what are you supposed to do step one i should say other than non-current assets other than non-current assets other than non-current assets first you measure it as per the respective standard applicable Suppose there is an investment in equity shares, refer in day is 109. If there is an inventory, refer in day is 2. If there is accounts receivable, that also in day is 109. Correct now. So, respective standard you are supposed to apply it. Correct now. So, measure it. Now, that group along with the, I mean, along with the non current assets held for sale, I mean, uh, non current assets, current assets, non current liability, current liability, this group now you compare it with the fair market value minus selling cost. If now if the it is lower if there is any loss now this loss has to be applied to the non-current assets held for sale that is if in the non-current assets held for sale if there is any goodwill first you should remove the goodwill element over and above the goodwill element if there is still loss that loss should be applied to non-current assets in the ratio of its carrying amount okay so that that is over right now subsequently if there is any increase increase in the non-current assets value yeah, subsequent measurement may if there is an increase in the non-current assets value then obviously you cannot recognize goodwill because you know recognition of goodwill leads to self-recognition self-generation of goodwill so that is which is prohibited yeah but you can increase it you can increase the non-current assets to the extent it was earlier reduced in the same proportion i mean carrying amount proportion may you can increase it back that is permitted okay subsequently you sold and you now you got the real loss or profit that loss or profit obviously will be transferred to profit and loss in the case in any case if the plan has been withdrawn the management changed their i mean mindset to not to sell it off 
yeah then obviously now i mean uh, now when it was classified it, it moved from ppu to below the current assets as non current assets held for sale as a separate line item now when you have changed your plan then it has to go back to you its original place but yes it will go back to its original place at what amount it should be at the lower of the two numbers that one is recoverable amount as per in days 36 recoverable amount what is recoverable amount as per in days 36 value in use or fair market value minus selling cost whichever is higher or the other one is the carrying amount if it was never classified as held for sale what would have been the carrying amount that also you are supposed to calculate why means the minute it was classified as held for sale you must have not not depreciated anything so now as usual you depreciate it and bring that number whichever is lower that number only should be there in your balance sheet yeah in this case if there is any profit or loss that also will be routed through profit and loss from continuing operations remember in this case any things comes that will be transferred to profit or loss from the continuing operation right? if it was a subsidiary wherein you changed your plan then now line by line consolidation will be taking place now let's get into the discussion number two that is topic number two discontinuing operations yeah operation operation means what basically it is it is a component it is a component means it should be an operating segment remember it should be operating segment it need not be reportable segment right it should be distinguishable for the i mean distinguishable for the purpose of financial reporting distinguishable in their operations and distinguishable i mean it is it, it, it its operations are different from other operations and we have a financial reporting means you can prepare a separate set of financial statement for that operations means you should be having entire data with you okay right what is this here that may be a major that's what i told you segment if you say it is a segment it may be major line of business or it may be geographical area that's like a business segment or geographical segment as per the single plan to dispose you may be selling it off it may be including a subsidiary which is acquired with an intention to sell it off yeah see if, if it is a discontinuing operation if it is a discontinuing operation the treatment accounting will be happening exactly equal to disposal group accounting will be exactly equal to disposal group topic number two is only meant for presentation what will happen in the profit and loss since it is a discontinuing operation a segment is getting sold in the very near future has decided to be sold it in the profit and loss you have to show separately continuing operation discontinuing operations that is not only for the current year even though it is decided in the current year to discontinue even the previous year previous year profit and loss is also supposed to be restated not only that even you are supposed to give the eps eps also eps also basic eps diluted eps for continuing operations for discontinuing operation for current year previous year and total this is this, this is basically a disclosure yeah disclosure I, I told you restate the previous year of the profit and loss and you will be presenting in the p and l as one line item generally one line item or second line also can be added that is for the tax expenditure that is profit or loss that is profit or loss before taxation from discontinuing operation plus or minus tax expenditure that includes deferred tax and every tax current tax and every tax and you have to disclose some more information what is the profit or loss that is expected to get on disposal okay i mean what is the expected amount at what you are going to sell it off right if the plan of discontinuing operation is dropped correct now then obviously only in the balance sheet represented and remeasurement is right required but not in the profit and loss this is the basic information if you like this video please share it with your friends and thank you very much wish you the very best